Welcome back to Abs Talks everyone. So as you can see from the title of the video, today I'll be doing a short breakdown, kind of a predictions video for the upcoming main event for UFC 253 between Israel Adesanya and Paulo Costa. This is one of the most anticipated middleweight matchups and I haven't been this excited about a middleweight fight, uh, a middleweight title fight since Izzy and Yol Romero, but we all know how that one ended up. So I'll be doing a short overview of some of the key stories leading up to this fight and then I'll go into perhaps the three main areas for each of these fighters and what they need to do to get the win and then at the end I'll just kind of give my prediction about how I see this fight playing out. As a lot of you already know, this fight was put together before, however, Paulo, Paulo Costa got injured and they had to make the fight between Israel Adesanya and Yor Romero instead, which for me was one of the most boring middleweight title fights I've ever seen, but anyways, Israel Adesanya got through that quite easily, um, Yol Romero wasn't really pushing the pace or doing anything to take that title away from Israel Adesanya, but now we've got this matchup and I think it's fair to say that some of the build up up to this fight has been really really interesting. Uh, one of the takeaways I've found is that actually Paulo Costa is being quite jokey and he's not taking a lot of things seriously at the moment, however Israel Adesanya, he, he seems quite tense wouldn't you say? Like even in his uh, interview recently, the one where Paulo Costa took his shirt off, Israel Adesanya just came up, came across quite tense and quite quite pressured almost. But I don't, I wouldn't pay too much attention to that. I don't think it's going to play that much of a factor into a fight. However, we have seen before where fighters get too emotional before a fight, and then when they're in the fight, they end up losing their way and they end up getting beat. However, I don't think that would be the case. So. Adesanya has been saying in the media that this will be one of his easiest fights so far and Costa of course has also been saying that this is going to be an easy fight for him and that he's going to be breaking the skinny guy in his own words. So that's kind of a little bit of a backstory of what's been happening so far. A little bit... It doesn't seem like it's very personal from Costa but it does seem like it is a bit personal from Israel Adesanya. But yeah, moving on to perhaps their fighting styles and how they might actually be the perfect fit for each other. So we've seen recently Israel Adesanya when he fought Yol Romero, he didn't really need to do much. He just, it was a strange one because in the first round we saw him get hit by a really good punch by Yol Romero. But other than that, Israel Adesanya just kept the range, kept away from Yol Romero and Yol Romero didn't really do much to go and get that title from Israel Adesanya. However, in the Robert Whittaker fight, I thought that was one of Israel Adesanya's best performances to date. He was he was on a fire in that fight and even I wasn't sure how he was going to do against someone like Robert Whittaker, but instead again we see him control the range so well. He he's using his kicks, his jabs, everything. Robert Whittaker was just missing and missing and Israel Adesanya, we saw how he made him pay for that. And of course the Kelvin Gastelum fight, which is one of the best fights I've seen, that was fight of the year and in that we saw that Israel Adesanya can really go five rounds, he can take a beating and he can still he can still win a fight and, and get through that in the most difficult way. Paulo Costa on the other hand, I feel like he's had a very easy ride in the UFC so far. His last fight, yes he did lose the last round against Yol Romero but even the first two rounds I feel like he was pushing the pace and he did really well against Yol Romero and we saw how much power he has. But prior to that he's faced Uriah Hall and Johnny Hendricks and to be honest he's not, he's not really had that same resume that Israel Adesanya has faced and a lot of people would say that actually he's quite lucky and he's been boosted up to this pro, uh, title fight whereas other people have had to go a much harder way, the likes of Kamaru Usman, the likes of Habib Nurmagomedov, they've had to fight literally so many people and even Leon Edwards at the moment who's on like an 8 or 9 win streak, he's still not had a title shot whereas Paulo Costa has had a few fights, albeit he's been quite conv convincing in a lot of them but he's managed to get that title shot. I have to say however I've been really impressed by what Paulo Costa has done, at the end of the day he can only fight and beat what's put in front of him and he's done that in a really really good way. In the lead up to this fight, a lot of people have been saying that Paulo Costa is just a, uh, like a bodybuilder, he's not actually that good of a mixed martial artist, but I've been watching a lot of his fights recently and to be honest, I feel like people don't give him the credit that he deserves. Paulo Costa is a very, very good body puncher, he's a very good body kicker 
He cuts off the cage really well. He puts pressure on his opponents. Yes, there's a big question mark about his gas tank. We saw that in the fight against Yoel Romero. It seemed as if he was running out of gas in the last round. But having said that, he's someone who's continually putting pressure on people. So we would expect him to get tired a little bit later. However, that is still a big question mark for him. And I think it's something that I'll... Well, it's something I'll talk about a little bit later on. But it's something I think is going to have a big impact on the fight. Nevertheless, I think that it's going to be a really interesting fight and I'm just going to move on to the three main, the three key main areas that I feel are for each fighter throughout this fight. So the first of three key areas which I think Israel Adesanya has to take advantage of over Costa in this fight is that, the fir is that firstly, he needs to make sure this fight remains in the middle of the octagon. We saw against Uriah Hall that Paolo Costa struggled when they kept it in the middle of the octagon. Uriah Hall was jabbing him and managing that distance really well and you can see that Paolo Costa was struggling. So that is the first thing that he needs to make sure he does. He needs to, make it, he needs to take advantage of that 8 inch reach advantage. The second thing that Israel Adesanya needs to make sure that he needs to do is that he needs to make sure that his feints are perfectly timed. Because Israel, because Paolo Costa has a tendency to bite at feints quite a lot. Israel Adesanya is one of the best at feints. He's one of he's the best kickboxer in UFC at the moment. I feel like if he can really, really ma make Paolo Costa bite at his feints, he can counter and he can use that to his advantage. So that is the second thing that I think Israel Adesanya needs to focus on in this fight. The third thing, which I think is the a key area for Israel Adesanya, is as I've mentioned already, and it's related to his 8 inch reach advantage is he needs to utilize that jab and I'm not just talking about punching I'm talking about kicking he needs to manage that distance he needs to keep Paolo Costa away every time Paolo Costa feels like he can come closer to him just dish out that jab that front kick and just keep him away on the flip side the three key areas for Costa I feel are number one that unlike Israel Adesanya he needs to make sure that this fight is taking place as close to the cage as possible he cannot afford to stay in the middle of the octagon because he's going to get out jabbed. He's going to get outworked by Israel Adesanya. It's like Israel Adesanya is perhaps the best striker in the UFC at the moment. So if that fight is anywhere near the middle of the octagon, I feel like Israel Adesanya is just going to school Paolo Costa for however many rounds this fight lasts. The second thing that Paolo Costa needs to make sure that he does is he needs to concentrate on that body work, body punches, body kicks. We know that he's known for his pressure and for keeping people up against the cage, but he's also known for his really good leg kicks, body kicks and his body punches. So he needs to make sure that he's doing that so he can wear down Israel Adesanya's body and make him tired. The third thing he needs to do is something that I also said Israel Adesanya needs to do is that he needs to also faint. It's... It, I mean, you you can get someone up against the cage and you can throw punches, but if you're not fainting and if you're not making Israel Adesanya guess where your punches are going to go, it's not going to really work out, especially with that 8-inch reach disadvantage that he has. He needs to faint, and Israel Adesanya had a te has a tendency to lean at times with his head, so if he can faint and if he can catch him in one of those moments, then there's a chance that he could do some real damage. Right, so given everything I've mentioned, my final prediction for this fight, this main event on UFC 253, is that I feel like Paolo Costa has got maybe seven or eight minutes to win this fight. I feel like he's got that amount of time to knock out or TKO Israel Adesanya. And the reason why I say that is I can only make a judgment based on the evidence that I've seen so far. Yes, Paolo Costa has pretty much dealt with everyone who's been put before him, apart from Yol Romero, who, who, who he went three rounds with and lost that last round. We saw in that third round that he does get tired, that he does look like he's starting to gas out. And when you're facing Israel Adesanya, someone who's going to constantly keep making you miss throughout a fight, who's going to be making you work, he's going to be making you w move around the octagon, that is going to take a big part out of your game, especially someone for, like Paolo Costa, who... Who, who just goes all out. He, there's no half measures with him. On top of the fact that he has a brutal weight cut. I mean, you've seen that guy outside of the octagon. He's he said before, and I think people have mentioned before outside, he's like 235, 240, and then he cuts about 20 to 25 pounds in the last couple of weeks, which, which is pretty normal, to be honest, for UFC fighters. However, for someone that big, I'm not, sh I'm not sure how well he can do in 25 minutes. Um, so having said that, I feel like I say seven or eight minutes he's got to win this fight. But don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if he does manage to pull it off. I feel like he's not been given enough respect for what he's done so far. With Israel Adesanya, 
Again, like I said, I can only go on the evidence that we've seen so far and Israel Adesanya has pretty much dealt with everything that has been put before him so far. Robert Whittaker, Joel Romero, Kelvin Gastelum, Derek Brunson. I mean, he's in every fight, it's like we see something different with him and I feel like we're going to see something even more with Paulo Costa. With Paulo Costa, I feel like he's got a style that's perf perfectly suited to what he does. A kickboxer, the best striker in the UFC in my opinion at the moment. His 8-inch reach advantage is going to play a massive factor. He just needs to make sure that that fight is happening in the middle of the octagon. He's going to be making Paulo Costa miss, miss. He's going to make him tired. And if I'm honest with you, I really think this fight is probably going to get finished in the 4th or 5th round by Israel Adesanya via TKO. I don't think he's going to completely knock him out, but I do feel like there's going to be a stoppage. Um, and that's how I see that fight going on. But like I say, don't count out Paulo Costa. He is a good fighter. He's got really good weapons in his arsenal. I don't think he's just a bodybuilder, which a lot of people kind of say. I think he is a decent fighter, to be honest. So yeah, that's how I see the fight going. Let me know what you guys think. Comment on the video or message me on Twitter or Instagram. Um, hopefully, I'll be doing more of these prediction breakdown videos. So hopefully, you've enjoyed this one. This is my first of hopefully many. If you like this video and would like me to do more of these kind of videos or if you have any other ideas of things that maybe you'd like to see on my channel, do let me know and I'll try and implement them. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and share the video if you can. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next video.